Today's lecture um, will be on the Big Thirst, Chapter 3, uh, Dolphins in the Desert. So this chapter focuses on the similarities and differences between two places, Las Vegas and Atlanta. Um, and Fishman really paints a picture of both locations and their struggles. Fishman says on page 74, though, if you if you turn your turn your text to page 74 and about um, I would say one two three four five six paragraph down that starts the differences between Atlanta and Las Vegas in water terms are equally important but they have nothing to do with climate or even with water the real difference between Atlanta and Las Vegas is attitude so this is really the big kind of the line that runs through the chapter is is he portrays Las Vegas and he portrays Atlanta and he really goes into detail about both places and the struggles that they have with water. The first part of the chapter Fishman talks about Las Vegas and he's really detailed about Las Vegas. Um, you know he gives us a relation he tell he kind of really explains the relationship that Las Vegas has to water and he introduces us to Pat Mulroy who is really an interesting character in this in this book she's a really interesting character in real life um, and it's just amazing how Fishman paints this image and um, explains to us kind of why Vegas is what it is and and that image that we have remember Thoreau talked about an image um, there are we discussed earlier in the semester the idea of the I, the image that we have of what nature looks like and so a lot of us have the idea that Las Vegas is an oasis in a desert so it's water heavy in a desert area and actually um, Fishman actually talks about that Pat Mulroy talks about the fact that when she met Steve Wynn he actually said he you know he he talked about the idea that you know Vegas is this oasis in the desert and that's what we have to give people is that you know people have this image in their brain about what Las Vegas looks like and we actually have to give it to them we have to be those we have to be the you know people who give them the image that they want um, and so he you know Fishman really really does a great job in this chapter. He talks about how Vegas is a demonstration of water imagination, water mastery, and absolute water confidence, which I think is really an interesting line to make about a specific area in the United States. Pat Mulroy, though, is, is one of the big things in this chapter, and I think it's something that we can't overlook. Fishman really talks about Pat Mulroy, that she's this leading force behind this water, um, the, this change in the ideals of water. Um, and he really talks about how you need that person, because on the flip side, when we, when we talk about Atlanta in the second half of the chapter, they had no one who was the Pat Mulroy. Um, that was needed to be able to convince people of how to act towards water. So Pat Mulroy introduced one one thing that I think is really interesting is Pat Mulroy for the first time introduced that you don't pay a blanket price for your water rather you actually pay per gallon used and this is a new interesting concept um, that a lot of people were never used to and I think it's something that's really really important it's the fact that you know a lot of times you're grouped into just different levels so if you use certain amount of gallons you just pay this one amount if you if you're use this next amount of gallons you pay this amount and then you might get a little surcharge if you use a significant amount over that and that's what was happening in Las Vegas um, for years and until a price tag was put on water did people start to recognize the importance of water so that is something that you really might want to check a little box and say to yourself this might be something that I want to discuss is the fact that in this chapter it specifically talks about putting a price tag on water and once that price tag was put on water where people could see they were being charged per gallon they actually changed their behavior because of the cost of water um, so it didn't have anything to do with anything else it actually had to do with the cost of water another thing that I want to talk about is that Fishman introduces 
the groundwater rights issue. And this will be another common thread that we talk about through the semester is groundwater rights, um, etc. And um, on page 60 at the bottom, so the last paragraph, it says Nevada has an unusual system of water rights. Groundwater is not exclusively exclusively connected to the land under which it's found. Groundwater that isn't being used is controlled by the state and be claimed and used by anyone who can make beneficial use of it. So if there is groundwater that's not being used, and remember groundwater is what's underneath the ground, so it's aquifer water. If there is groundwater that's not being used, someone else can claim that for beneficial use. One of the big things though that happened in Vegas was, Vegas went around and collected all of they found every aquifer that wasn't being used and permitted it to Las Vegas. So all of this water now is being pumped into Las Vegas. And while it looks like the short-term effect is great, meaning Vegas gets water, the long-term interest of the entire state of Nevada is hampered by that. And I want, if you, on page 61, if you go to the end um, of the one to the second full paragraph, it, you know, Mulroy is having a conversation um, with someone else and it says um, the county commissioner and the county commissioner says the development of rural Nevada is dead now because of Las Vegas and the reason for that is there's no water out there now because Vegas went out and um, permitted all that water to be sent to Las Vegas um, and Pat Mulroy uh, reported back to him and says Mul retorted Mulroy, if Las Vegas dies, Nevada dies. So this, and here comes up another question to be asked, and that is the fact that Vegas is a strong economy. It brings a lot of jobs, a lot of tourists, a lot of money to the state. And what Pat Mulroy is kind of saying there is if Vegas goes away, this entire state goes away. So the fact that we take this water for our use is okay. It makes it okay. And that is a big question that you need to answer is, is that okay or is that not okay? Um, and, you know, what is the reasoning behind that? What is the reasoning behind maybe your other point of view that it's not okay, um, et cetera? And we'll run into this again um, when we talk in the last part of this uh, course when we talk about um, Owens Valley water in California. So um, let me just go on. So the reason that Fishman talks about Vegas in here is that while they um, while they are an oasis in the desert and technically Vegas should not be the booming place that it is today, the population is exploding just like Atlanta, um, their mindset on water, remember he talked about that attitude is completely different. People in Vegas know water is a commodity, a very valuable commodity, and they're willing to sacrifice for it. Pat Mulroy put into place that cash for grass program where she gave people, if you rip up your lawns or if a golf course rips up their lawn and puts in exos, uh, scaping, which is um, t drought tolerant landscaping, rocks instead of grass, turf instead of grass, etc., that she would give you tax rebates or money back. And so this was a wonderful program and this changed a lot of the people's mind in that area is that, hey, listen, you know, artificial grass saves water. Um, rock landscaping saves water. So a lot of people in Vegas are very well aware and they're very accepting to new and uh, different concepts on saving water. Now on the flip side, if we move to Atlanta, we're talking about the same sort of situation, a booming area um, where the population is exploding and um, people want big yards, people want big houses. Same in Vegas, people wanted to retire there and have their bluegrass from Kentucky, as Mulroy says. Um, but there's big problems with this. And, and that same rings true for that Atlanta situation. In the second part of the chapter, he talks about that Atlanta. And one of the big things with Atlanta that Vegas has is they have water lead. Vegas has water leadership. Atlanta does not have water leadership. So you need someone in that position who is a leader in the water conservation area. Um, and page 77 talks about this. So if we if we move to page 77, um, it 
on the bottom of 77, there's a paragraph there that's indented, and it says, too often state, local, and even national governments, um, actors do not consider the long-term consequences of their decisions. Local governments allow unchecked growth because it increases tax revenue, but these same governments do not sufficiently plan for the resources such unchecked growth will require, nor do individual citizens consider frequently enough their cons consumption of our scarce resources and it goes on to talk about the basin that they pull water from and the litigation over that area that that reservoir remember that Atlanta in this chapter talks about that Atlanta never put a claim in for now they do want to claim in that reservoir area so this chapter really talks about the fact that there's been no water leadership so Atlanta doesn't have that attitude that Las Vegas has it's causing a big problem for them so one of the big things to take from this is that um, you know you want to of course make sure you read through the two parts and and figure out what are the um, similarities and differences between Atlanta and with Las Vegas but at the end of the day um, almost everyone has a problem with water has a water issue everyone every state every county um, every city um, and what Fishman really says here is that it's good news is that Vegas is a wonderful example that it can be solved but the way it has to be solved is way before the problem not when there's a major issue and unfortunately Atlanta is in that situation where there's a major issue and they're trying to solve it as they go along Vegas on the other hand is trying to prevent the issue from happening so they're looking forward Atlanta is fixing it as they go and this is the big issue with water is water actually takes to prevent water emergencies it takes really a lot of planning and upfront money <clears throat> And if we want to solve water issues, we need to be educated before the issue rather than after. So make sure you read the chapters, get a good, uh, take a lot of information in on both Pat Mulroy and um, on Gill in the, in the Atlanta issue. Um, and make sure, do not forget to take your quiz at the end of the session that will be on Chapter 3, Dolphins in the Desert.